13 to 14. 1 Peter 4, 13 to 14 says, But rejoice. But rejoice. Inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be what? Overjoyed when his glory is revealed. When you suffer for the name of Jesus, what Peter is telling us is that when, he, when his glory is revealed, when he comes down, when he returns, we will be filled with joy. Because we have suffered for the name of Jesus. Verse 14, if you are insulted, that is if you are persecuted, because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. If you are insulted, because of the name of Jesus, you are blessed. Why? For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. So just right now in Hebrews that Christ is returning to offer salvation to those who wait for him. And now in Peter, we are reading that he is coming to offer a reward for those who have suffered for his name. Christ is returning to reward true believers who have persevered to the end and to reward them with the crown of righteousness. He is coming to reward us with a crown of righteousness. He is coming to reward us with a crown of righteousness. And we see this in 2 Timothy 4 verse 8. 2 Timothy 4 verse 8 tells us, it says, this is Paul uh, writing to Timothy. He says here, yeah, let's, go, let, let's go to verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now Paul realizes that his end is near. He's writing to Timothy and he said to Timothy, listen, all right? In fact, verse 6, he says, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. So Paul realizes that the time of his departure is about to leave this world. And he said in verse 7, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And because of all those things, verse 8 says, he says, now, because I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. Paul sacrificed for the Lord Jesus. He gave his all for the Lord Jesus. And at the time of his departure, when, the, when, the, when he realized that his life was coming to an end, he wasn't sad. He wasn't disappointed. He was almost joyous. He was looking forward to it because he said, he says, he, he, could, he, could, he could do that because he said he, he realized that he had fought the good fight. He had fought the good fight of faith. He finished his race. He didn't start the race and fall off halfway through. He finished his race to the very end. And he kept the faith. He kept the faith in Jesus. And because of those things, because of his relationship with Jesus, because of his love for Jesus, he could say confidently, that there is now in store for him a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, is going to give him on that day. Remember again, the Lord has appointed the day where he will vindicate and reward his children. At the same time, he's going to judge the world of sin. So we have to make sure that on that day that we are on the right side of that fence. And Paul is saying that the Lord will award him a crown of righteousness on that day, but not only to him, hear that, not only to him, but also to all, all who have done what? Who are longing for his appearing, who are waiting for his return, who are ready for his return, who are prepared for his return. 